Okay, morning everybody. Everyone's just logging in at the moment. Uh, welcome to the John Cullen Light Bites uh, bathroom episode. In terms of bathrooms, um, I want to give you just a little bit of technical uh, information before we get um, into things in more detail. Um, so with electrics and lighting in particular for bathrooms, um, in the UK there is um, a code which you need to follow um, uh, when selecting a light source. Depending on which zone of the bathroom it's going into, you might need a different IP rating. So the IP rating um, is basically the IP stands for ingress protection. Um, and then you have two letters, or two numbers rather. So IPXX here. The second number is relevant to water ingress. The first is um, foreign objects and dust and things like that. Um, so with bathrooms, it's the second number really that you're most concerned with. And I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail now. Maybe it's something that you can screenshot or maybe refer to um, on the recording when we send it out later. Uh, but basically, yeah, each zone of the bathroom requires a different rating um, just to ensure that water is not going to get into that fitting. Um, firstly, to um, damage the fitting, uh, but secondly, for uh, electrical safety reasons as well. We don't want anyone to be electrocuted. Um, so there's various different sort of tiers to um, the system here, uh, with the <clears throat> top tier being basically we can be permanent, permanently submerged in water. Uh, so if you're in zone zero, which is a shower tray or in the bath, then you'll be looking at um, uh, an IP rating of IPX7 or 8. Uh, but if you're not in one of these uh, zones, then actually you can have pretty much whatever you want. Um, so above the shower, for example, um, you could install um, a non-IP rated fitting, as long as it's uh, low voltage there. Um, if it's above 2.25, <clears throat> then you can have whatever you want. However, it's worth considering the fact that there is still going to be a lot of steam um, and humidity in that area, and you may want to go for an IP rated fitting uh, regardless. Uh, I've just seen on the Q&A that someone's requesting past episodes uh, of the uh, Light Bites. I'm just going to flick back to the previous page. So all of these sessions are being recorded um, and we, we are sending out links for these following the sessions. Uh, we're also posting these onto our YouTube channel as well. So Open Plan Living Spaces is already on there. Um, Garden uh, will be on there uh, later this week and then we'll post them on a weekly basis. But you should get a link to this recording uh, straight after the, the presentation. So um, last week I asked if um, anybody had a, an active plan that they would like to send through that we could use as an example base um, to build a lighting design around. And a few people got in contact with me. Um, Twinning Designs sent through a really interesting uh, bathroom design, which I'm going to take you through today. Um, the reason I chose there is just because it had a lot of opportunities to um, introduce various different lighting uh, techniques so that I can share those ideas with you and just take you through how I would do it. Um, I would recommend checking out the um, Twinnings uh, website. Um, they're an Italian um, brothers um, based in London. It looked like they work on some really exciting projects. I think they're updating their website at the moment, but there's still some really nice images on there um, and uh, definitely quite inspirational. So this is their plan, um, which is a really cool bathroom. Not everyone's going to have the opportunity to you know, have a bathroom like this or even work on a project that um, has this sort of bathroom. Um, but um, nonetheless, they have this project that's come through and it's a great opportunity for us to use it as an example design. Uh, I had a chat with Marco um, from Twinnings and we went some, through some of the requirements for the bathroom and some of the specifics. Um, so we have the shower cubicle here. Um, it's glass fronted um, between the main section of the bathroom and the shower. Within the shower cubicle, we have two benches. Um, the shower head is on the wall here. We have two recesses in the wall. Uh, these are linear recesses. We also have the um, WC um, cubicle as well. And this is frosted glass on the front here. We have a tall, thin uh, recess um, above the loo. Um, the bath is freestanding in front of this amazing sort of bay window, and that will have some shutters on it. 
you've got a double vanity unit here and in between a dressing table. So, and this is uh, all of this unit here is a floating unit um, with uh, three mirrors in front of each of these sections. Uh, and then within the center of the space, you have um, an ottoman. Um, so a bit of casual seating there. So in terms of building up the lighting plan, the most important aspect for me, and the thing that we've absolutely got to get right for the client is that when they look in the mirror, it's got to be a flattering lighting effect, you know, that you've got to look good. Um, so the most important thing here is uh, an even lighting effect. We ideally you want maybe a light either side of the mirror to give you an even wash of light. What you don't want is a down light straight on top of your head, which is directed down because you end up with shadows under your eyes, under your chin. Uh, it actually makes it difficult to um, do makeup or shave. Um, and also you just look terrible. So having a light in front of you, uh, which is giving you a soft ambient light um, would be really good. Um, so what I'm going to do here is because I don't want too many wall lights here, I'd have to have one, two, three, four to do each side of each mirror. Uh, I'm actually going to backlight um, each mirror using an LED strip to create a halo effect. Uh, and that's going to reflect light off the back wall uh, back towards my face. So it's a non-direct light source, which is going to be uh, more or less shadow free. On a separate circuit, but also related to um, the mirror area, I'm going to use in the ceiling a directional down light. Uh, and I'm going to use this to bounce light off the mirror and then back in towards the basin. And what that's going to do is just give a little bit of sparkle into the basin and onto the taps. Um, if you don't have that down light there, it can just feel a little bit flat and dull. Um, so introducing that really lifts the space and gives a, a sparkle effect. So let me show you some images here. So um, behind the mirror there, um, I'm using uh, an LED tape, uh, this contour tape. I'm using a 2700 Kelvin version. Uh, so that's all the way behind the mirror here. It's reflecting, so directed towards the back wall and then bouncing light off the back wall towards your face. So it gives you a really nice, soft, indirect light source. I'm using the same principle here behind the mirror. And you can see in the ceiling here, a directional down light. And that's giving you that sparkle effect and light to the basin just to lift the space a little bit. And you can use the pole spring 40 for that um, as long as your ceiling height isn't above sort of three or uh, three and a bit meters. You can see in the ceiling here as well, square version, just giving you these nice pools of light um, down into the basin area. So that's the first element of the lighting. Um, the second element is the bath itself. And what I'm looking to create here is a bath of light. So I'm going to use two directional lights in the ceiling and I'm going to direct, direct those into the bath itself. So the effect I'm going to get, I'm going to use the pole spring 40, is here where it looks like the bath is filled to the brim with light. I'll turn it off again and then back on and you can see the impact that it makes. So with these lights here, ideally you want to create um, a second or a separate circuit for these so you can control them independently from the rest of the room. Um, typically, on a daily basis, people are having showers, um, which are quick and easy, and then you might have a bath a couple of times a week. So I'd have a separate setting um, for when you're having a bath where those down lights are turned off um, and you can sit comfortably in the bath um, and relax without a spotlight shining straight into your face. I also want to introduce um, some decorative lighting in the bathroom. So um, the guys at Twinnings have introduced an ottoman in the center of the space, which I thought was a really good idea. Um, and actually um, made me think of a, a post that I read over the weekend, which is from one of our other contacts, um, Anne Haynes. Um, so she runs an interior design business and we've, we've worked with them on a couple of projects. Um, and she said that, this whole situation of um, living and working at home has made her sort of really understand how she's using her home. And actually me space is really important. And she says that she found that her ensuite area is really a sanctuary for her um, and a place where she can escape for a bath and just relax uh, away from the rest of the world. Um, because we're spending you know, time uh, cooped up with, you know, our partners, family, 
um, or uh, other flatmates and things like that. So I thought the, the concept of the bathroom being a sanctuary or feeling like a spa was really important because um, the bathroom's not just a place where you go and you get ready in the morning where you want bright task lighting. Actually, in the evenings, it needs to be adaptable. You need to have an environment which is um, atmospheric, relaxing, um, ambient, 